How you going? This is a field. This is a boot. Put them together and you get Grant Stone's field boot in Badalassie Carlo's veg tanned, settle tanned makeup. Keep watching and I'll tell you what they've been through in the last three months. G'day and welcome to Bootlosophy. If we haven't met, my name is Tech and I'm in Perth in Western Australia. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live and work on, the Wajik people of the Noongar Nation. Today, I'm going to take a look at how uh, these field boots by Grant Stone have held up in the three months that I've had them. But first, a reminder about Grant Stone. If you're new to the quality heritage style boot world, you may not have heard of Grant Stone. Uh, for those of you who have, bear with me. Uh, Grant Stone is based in the US Great Lakes state of Michigan in a town called Baroda. Okay, I worked in Chicago for a year in the 1990s, but I admit I'm terrible at American ge geography. Um, I only knew that Michigan was somewhere to our right somewhere, and I have no idea where uh, Baroda is or how big it is. Anyway, their headquarters and warehouse is in Baroda, Michigan but their manufacturing is contracted to a family-owned factory in Xiamen, China. Now, I've been to Xiamen. It was probably 10 years ago now, maybe even more, I think. And it's on an island that even then was a booming resort island. For Aussies, it's like the Gold Coast. And for Americans, it's like Las Vegas. For the Brits, think Blackpool before 1980 and then amp it up by 100. Because they're made in China, people often question uh, either the politics or the quality. I'm not a fan of authoritarianism anywhere, but I understand the factory is privately family owned, if that makes a difference to you. As for quality, well, since Grandstone started in 2016, there's been a lot of discussion about their quality, and I think the argument is clearly settled today. Grandstone boots are objectively the most well-made boots you can get for their price, and clearly operate a strict specification and inspection system as would any good manufacturer. In some interviews with uh, the founders, Wyatt Gilmore and Josh Lang, they don't specifically say it, but they talk of uh, discussions over imperfections that indicate they also have, uh, whether formally or informally, a productive, continuous improvement process. If you want to see more talk about their quality standards, uh, go check out my earlier video about their diesel boot in the same saddle tan leather uh, up there. This is their field boot model. It's based on uh, what I think I can call an American hunting boot style. Uh, maybe not the L.L. Bean uh, rubber bottom style, but more of the type made by, say, Ru Russell Moccasin. Let me be clear, though, that is the style. These are not uh, real moccasins where the bottom piece is one piece of leather wrapped under the feet and then sewn onto the uh, top vamp piece with this classic moccasin stitch. Okay, that needs some unpacking. Uh, first, Moccasins are the footwear originally made by Native Americans where one piece of leather wraps under your foot and is then sewn onto the vamp piece with the uh, famous moccasin stitch around the top of the vamp. There are many mock moccasin boots. Uh, the Red Wing Classic Mock Toes, Thoroughgood's uh, Classic Mock Toes, all of these have that stitch and some are really sewing two pieces of leather together Others merely mimic the stitch to raise the leather there into a roll. And yet others, like the Alden Indy, are clearly just a cosmetic stitch without even raising or puckering the leather uh, around the apron. Grantstone themselves do a mock toe in their brass boot. And you can see uh, my review of one up here. I believe that only Rancourt and uh, Russell Moccasin are the only ones today who still use genuine moccasin construction. Uh, now, I'm sure I'm going to get comments below uh, telling me I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and I have been told, but I cannot verify, that the Timberland boat shoe is actually a hand-stitched moccasin construction. So there, even more comments. Anyway, genuine moccasin-constructed boots have the single piece of leather wrapping under the foot and sewn onto the apron piece, but then uh, a more hardy outsole is attached and sewn to the bottom. These field boots have the look of that classic moccasin construction with the other panels uh, around the bumper, but these are actually constructed using the Goodyear Welt form of construction. 
see my video about the details of Goodyear Welt construction up there. The 360 degree Goodyear Welt uh, attaches to the uppers and insole on the inside of the boot and attaches to the midsole on the outside. Then the rubber wedge sole is glued to the midsole. Inside is a cork filler and a steel shank. Even though I'm never sure why wedge sole boots need shanks, somebody will tell me. The uppers are tough veg tanned leather from Badalassi Carlo in Italy. They are known for their traditional tanning methods, uh, rotating hides in a vat or botali in a liquor made from tree barks. This is their premium grade four grain leather that while having the firm feel of veg tanned leather, still has a pretty supple feel to it. When new, it has a bright orangey color, but as it gets wet and patinas with use, develops into this deep caramel tan. This pair was oiled with liquid mink oil before I went on my vacation because I knew that they would be subject to wet, muddy conditions. And they did darken a shade because of that. Under normal conditions with a conditioner like Venetian Shoe Cream or Big Four, uh, this shade won't start appearing until at least a year as happened on my diesel boots in this leather. I don't mind it. I prefer the uh, slightly muted effect of the oil and water on it. Um, the design is a mock toe, hence the stitching around the apron. It looks like actually two pieces of leather uh, sewn together. You can see the top vat piece being hand stitched over the side wall showing the flap that's stitched down. The quarters are sewn uh, on top of a boat shaped uh, piece of leather. So that's the quarters. And the boat shaped piece of leather goes around the, uh, the boot adding to the real but not quite real moccasin construction. There's a piece of the leather bumper across the toe, but it isn't a real toe bumper either, I don't think. It's sewn onto the side piece rather than on top of it as a second piece of leather, uh, rather like a false toe cap. There is a single piece backstay with a pocket stitch, further adding to the look of a hand-stitched moccasin style. Uh, inside the heel is a veg tanned leather heel counter, which in this case feels really stiff and supportive. The quarters uh, provide a 7 inch shaft, uh, 8 if you measure from the bottom of the heel. At the top of the shaft is a padded collar made from suede. Uh, the padding is very light, not like the padding at the top of a Timberland Classic uh, yellow boot. It's not bad in use. It does reduce the rubbing on the back of your leg if the shaft was uh, all firm veg tanned leather. What it doesn't do though, unlike the Tim's, is to provide a waterproof seal if you cinch the lace up tight. The skinny laces provided go through brass eyelets and two D-rings at the top. Noisy. <laughs> the laces are skinny and difficult to cinch up because they slip backwards against the hardware as you tighten them and before you tie them. They are a bit of a pain to lace up because of that and because of the floppy D-rings. I have tried putting leather laces through, but they don't look right somehow, like the balance is off. I haven't tried thicker paracord laces and that might work better cosmetically. Now I took possession of these, ripping them out of the hands of the posty last May, uh, so it's been a little over three months. In the short number of times I've worn them, I have worn them reasonably hard. I first wore them every day for a week and then every second day for another week uh, in order to break them in. That's my usual breaking schedule. Uh, that was in an entirely urban situation, wearing them to go to work in my office and to go to the shops and around the parks near my home. Breaking them in was really no problem, aside from the usual extra flexing required for wedge sole boots. Apart from the uh, centimeter thick wedge at the flex point, the welt is about three or four millimeters thick and the veg tanned midsole is also about four millimeters thick. So getting them to flex where my feet flex was as always, something you need to work on when breaking in wedge sole boots. Then I spent a period of about a month wearing them at least three or four times a week, but not always for a full day. Uh, I'd wear them when I worked in my yard or uh, to go for long walks in uh, different terrain from around the suburb to a journey through Kings Park, which is a bush reserve nearby, uh, or through some of the walks available near me that had rocky, sandy and limestone gravel paths. Uh, the boots went through all that quite well. They were a little uncomfortable as work boots, digging holes in the garden <laughs> or kneeling on the roof cleaning gutters because they were stiff and difficult to kneel, but I might put that to not being totally broken in in that respect. Initially, taking them for long walks was also uncomfortable because I really felt the stiffness in the leather and 
cork and sole combination under my feet. But after a few good walks of a good duration, it seemed to settle down. In my usual half down from true size 8, these in the Floyd last are roomy and I think I could have got away with another half size down and maybe going up a width. The extra volume added to the discomfort on long walks, but after adding a thin foam insole, it was fine. Then I spent another month breaking in other new boots, but I did always pull these out when my wife and I went for our Sunday hikes uh, through the National Forest south of Perth. Um, so add to the experience another four or five days of six to seven hour walks in dry but rocky forest trails. Finally, I took them on a vacation to our southern forests in our southwest uh, in the wet winter we had this year. They were used most days out of the 10 days as daily wear whenever we went to the nearest town or, um, well, into wineries. <laughs> but I also used them extensively on four day-long hikes we took through the parts of uh, the Biberman Track. That's a long forest and coastal track through that part of the world. On those hikes, they went through really wet forest trails in the rain and got totally wet and soaked on most days. And my report is they did not let a drop of water in. All right, I didn't swim across a brook, but two inch deep water courses were not a problem. And I had to jump, splash across a, a sudden stream of water caused by the heavy rain and nothing got through. S hiking boots, big tick. QC after three months uh, use like that, also big tick. Nothing came loose, uh, nothing split, no loose threads even or stitching. I suppose I should tell you now about conditioning. I did not condition these when I first got them, but after planning our vacation, I oiled them with liquid mink oil just before we left. Yeah, I know, of course that will darken the leather, but I was more concerned of the waterproofing that they would need. They darkened, but I don't mind. As you can see, I, I call them mellowed rather than darkened. Um, after the deluge, <laughs> I just wipe them clean with a damp rag, brush the remaining dirt off when dry, uh, and then gave them a coat of Venetian shoe cream when I got home. The VSC got absorbed pretty quickly, so I guess they needed it after the moisture. A second coat was applied immediately and then brushed off with a good quality horsehair brush. Now, if I, A, did mind getting them darkened and B, did not intend to use these as proper field boots, I would have just stuck with VSC from the very beginning. Okay, so to summarize, um, good boots, good quality out of the box, good quality under more pressure than many of my boots. The outsoles have worn well, except for the grant stone embossed leather patch under the instep. Uh, that's been scratched and really looks ugly. Not sure why they bothered to put it there. Good comfort during and after breaking. Wedge soles are comfy, but two cons with these. Firstly, they can be slippery in muddy clay. I don't think the corrugated pattern is deep enough or perhaps being all in one direction, uh, uh, maybe that could have made them slippery. Uh, second, if you get mud in the troughs of the corrugations, wiping them to come indoors is not a quick task. Wiping your feet on the doormat in the usual way, i.e. dragging your feet backwards, does not work. And you kind of have to do a, a kind of shimmy to drag your feet sideways in line with the ridges. Uh, that sounds silly, I know. Uh, until your wife notices the muck that you're bringing into the house and it's no longer silly. As a work boot, the Thoroughgood uh, wedge sole and Red Wings traction tread are really good to remove dirt as you walk in and out of a construction site. These would not be that good for that. As for long-term value, well, it's only been three months, but I am confident in these, so I think they stand up well. Already a good price for such a well-constructed boot with Badalassi leather at 380 US when competitors might well sell these for 100 more, they are clearly going to last a long game, making cost per wear economical. And that's it. Uh, these are making their way up there in the list of boots that I most grab when I'm going outdoors. Hey, I hope you like this uh, quick look at the field boots. If you did, please click on the like button. I'm, I'm gradually moving up to 9,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you help me out by clicking on subscribe below as well. And in between video uploads, if you want to catch up on boots, you can check out my website, bootlosophy.com. 
Until next time, take care and see you then.